into the midst of this banqueting comes the green knight. And we look at some of the details of his description in the text. From his neck to his loins, so square set was he, and so long and stalwart of limb, that I trow he was half a giant. Yet he was a man and the merriest that might ride. His body and back and breast was strong, his belly and waist were very small, and all his features full clean. Great wonder of the night folk had in Hall, I ween, full fierce he was to sight, and overall bright green. So notice he's described as a giant of a man. Elsewhere in other translations it might say he's a troll of a man. He's, he's huge, massive guy, but he's all green. And we're not, we're not just saying green in his clothing. He was green in skin and green in his, his hair and green in his, his teeth. Everything was green about him. So he, was, um, he wore trappings that were green, but he was not just the clothing that was green. Elsewhere in the text it says this here. He was all clad in green garments and fitting close to his sides, a straight coat with a simple mantle above it and well lined with gay and bright furs, as was also his hood hanging about his locks and round his shoulders. So you notice his, his clothing is green, but he also has the fur inside which keeps him warm, but is the fur of dead animals, that he has, uh, he has uh, dead things on the inside that, that keep him warm, and he's covered in, in, in green. And then further on it says this, Verily all his vesture was of pure green, both the stripings of his belt and the stones that shone brightly in his gorgeous apparel, upon silk work on his person and saddle. And it would be too tedious to tell you even half of such trifles as were thereon embroidered with birds and flies in gaudy greens, and ever gold in the midst. But notice he's got green stones on him, which suggests a certain royalty or richness. And he's also got embroidered on him green flies, and birds. There are two of the same type of creature which are embroidered on his clothing. The birds on the one hand suggest a freedom, ethereal, uh, happy, and beautiful uh, aspect, and flies on the other hand are similarly flying creatures, but they congregate on dead things. The character then is also described as having a huge axe in one hand and a holly bush in the other. The holly bush is a symbol of Christmas, remember. It's an evergreen with red and green in its, in its colors. He also has no shoes, which means his connection to the earth is direct. It doesn't have any impediment through his shoes. He's riding on a horse. It's all embroidered as well. The horse has trappings all over it that are embroidered, and its, its hair is embroidered with gold. But if you remember, the gold is the color of the sun, and so there's this element of the sun in him. But the predominant color, the color of green, is a color which immediately makes us think about the, the world of nature, the world of green and growing things, and that's precisely what this character conjures up. He is a classic example of what in English literature is called the green man. The green man was a spirit of, uh, of the forest and of the woods. It represents uh, gr that, that whole power or force that causes fructifaction, the growing of green stuff. And that green man doesn't necessarily look out for the good of human life. In fact, in some ways, the green man is antithetical to human life. He's against human life because we, human beings, are essentially fertilizer when, from the perspective of the green. The green waits for living things to die so that they can fertilize the earth and cause growth to occur. And so for the green, human beings are, are simply a food waiting to happen. So the green represents to a great degree, and the green man represents a great degree, a malevolent force, a force that's antagonistic to human life, that seeks to devour or consume human life. And consequently, the green man this guy, the Green Knight, is going to represent a force that doesn't seek our good. It seeks our demise, our death. He represents our death and the imminence, the fact that we cannot escape this, the fact that all of us will be pushing up daisies at some point, is something which should cause great terror in the hearts of even the most stalwart of knights. The question then that is going to be raised here is whether or not the chivalry of this court will stand up to that bare bald fact that every one of us is fertilizer waiting to happen. The Green Knight poses exactly this in the nature of his, his uh, game that he proposes here in the next stanza. But we'll see that game here together when we read the stanza.